Hello and welcome to Rotter Reviews, and today I'm going to be reviewing the 2013 movie from Japan, By Location. Before I get into that, and somewhat appropriately for this movie title, I'm actually making a pretty big announcement in that I am splitting the channel up. Take a look for links in the description or the pinned comment below, but I am starting a new channel called Rotted Entertainment. And the reasoning for this is I'm basically going to be divvying up my content between the two. This main channel of Rotted Reviews is going to be dedicated to absolutely nothing but but individual movie reviews. Lists, top five whatevers, rankings, rants, all that will go into Rotted Entertainment. It's basically playing into YouTube's algorithm as I make the content that I want to without oversaturating one particular channel. So feel free, go ahead and check it out. I'd really appreciate getting this off the ground. So please go ahead and give it a visit and subscribe. The first video launches midnight on Thursday. So by location, directed by Maria Santo, introduces us to our main character, who is an aspiring artist, painter. She's constantly trying to paint the landscape outside of her window, and she's a little bit split because she's a newlywed and now lives in the apartment below where she used to paint. However, she's kept her old apartment directly upstairs, mostly to use as a studio, but also to kind of have a little bit of an escape. And things start happening to her that's a little bit odd. People are looking at her in the street a little differently. Her husband mentioned that he thought he saw her in a location that she she never was. So, yes, sir. And that's when we get introduced to the paranormal phenomenon of bilocation, where you actually manage to split yourself in two and have two different versions of yourself out in the world. You have your main self, the self that you've always had, and then you also have the bit of yourself that was born out of your indecisive emotions and what other emotions kind of carried forward with that, be it love or anger or what have you. This all kind of comes to light as she gets picked up and introduced to a therapy group of other folks that also have bilocations, some of which are a bit nasty. And that is kind of what leads into the horror aspect of this film, aside from the fact that you have another one of you running around pretending to be you. So there were two reasons that kind of came into play as far as why I picked this movie to watch. The first of which was the poster, which, damn, is awesome. I love this picture. It's just iconic, it's gruesome, it's interesting, it's odd. Everything about it, I love. And because of that, I actually thought that this movie might fit into a little bit of a slot that I was planning on having for the Rotted Entertainment channel. However, after having watched it, I realized that this movie really just isn't up to snuff to be included in the top anything. That's not to say that I didn't like it, I certainly didn't actively hate it, but for me this film just kind of wound up being very middle of the road and falling into a lot of very odd traps. It had a very good polish to it, the special effects weren't half bad, uh, I think that there was a lot of twin usage in this, so everything was fairly seamless as far as that goes, but the blood and the gore and the effects that kind of arose from the horror elements of this were very, very serviceable. I really don't have major complaints as far as the technical overall aesthetics of this film. For me, where this kind of fell flat as a film was in the delivery of the information of the storyline. As this main character is going through what she's going through, a lot of what information she's receiving is coming from the support group and the leader of the support group, who is kind of almost the archetype of the smartest man in the room. Although there is another trope that is well-worn and weird that also comes into play, the other smartest man in the room. The mysterious masked figure with numbers and figures at the ready and, and always an air of suspicion about him. By location is original to the location. The location is original to the location. The location is original to the location. As much as I hate to put it this way, I could not get the thought out of my brain as I was watching this, is by location very much unfolds with characters straight out of an anime. Additionally, there was a lot of frustration in play for me watching this. I don't mind watching characters making bad decisions, that's just part and parcel of horror films. But sometimes... In the light of exceptionally bad decisions, one after another, after another, after another, it just becomes a bit tiresome. And when we're given the information about how to tell by locations apart from one another, most notably the fact that other people can't see the reflections in a mirror, so everybody is given a mirror so that they can tell if a by location is present, 
And then the obvious sitcom situation of a bilocation fighting with their primary character and nobody knowing where to point the gun, which one's the real one. You have a mirror in your pocket. And that's really it more than anything else, as I found bilocation to be a fairly mediocre, technically adept, overall somewhat enjoyable film that winds up just treading on the same tired ground as a million animes, sitcoms, and films before it offering absolutely nothing new and certainly nothing surprising, despite the fact that it tries very, very hard at having some good twists. So would I recommend by location? Uh, you know what? I, I don't know. Uh, for anybody out there that's just wanting to watch a good horror movie, I honestly don't think that I would. For fans of Japanese horror films, J-horror, Asian horror, anything along those lines, I think that there are a lot worse entries out there, so if you are a little bit of a completionist, you want to get this one under your belt, there's absolutely nothing in it that would make me want to dissuade you from watching it. So that's about as good as I can give as far as a recommendation for the 2013 movie by location. That should about wrap this review up. Remember, please check the description and the comments for the link to Rod at Entertainment. A subscription there would help me get on my feet with the new channel greatly. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror film, first make sure that it's good and rotted.